So let's talk fish oil. Fish oil is a very commonly used supplement. It's very popular among those looking to improve their bone health. But does it actually work? So stick around for this video because we're going to talk about what it is, why it's revered in the health industry, what literature supports using it, and for what outcomes. I'm also going to talk about whether or not we use it, which products we actually use, and give you some very specific recommendations. So first, let's just talk about what this thing is. So when we say fish oil, what do we actually mean? Well, this is literally the fatty acids that come from certain fish. And these fatty acids that come from the fat from fish are high in these oils, these fatty acids called omega-3 fatty acids. So what does that mean? The nomenclature here is really confusing because we have saturated fatty acids or saturated fat. We've got monounsaturated fats. We've got polyunsaturated oils. We've got this whole thing around seed oils and like our seed oils, the same thing as fish oils because they're all omega-6. Like it's very, very confusing. So let me break this down for you. The two most common fatty acids in fish oil are DHA and EPA. And their actual names are very long. We'll just call them those acronyms. We'll get into the health benefits later, but let me talk a little bit more about the nomenclature here. So when we talk about saturated fats or any fat, really, when we talk about any fat, we're talking about a molecule that has a carbon backbone and is has a certain number of hydrogens and different types of bonds. That's what all these things are. Now, a fully saturated fatty acid has a string of carbons and then hydrogens at every carbon on both sides. That's a saturated fat. When you take off one of those hydrogens and instead of a hydrogen there, the bond becomes a double bond. Now you have a monounsaturated fatty acid. And so that would be like the primary fatty acid in olive oil, avocado oil. Okay, so monounsaturated fats, that's what those are. And then if you were to take another hydrogen off, then you would have at least two double bonds and that's gonna be a polyunsaturated fat or a PUFA. And there's different versions of that. So of course there are trans fats too. And we're not gonna talk much about trans fats because we know that those are bad and inflammatory and we don't wanna use them. But we're gonna talk a little bit more about polyunsaturated fats. So the challenge with polyunsaturated fats and the reason why people, many reasons, one of the reasons why people are concerned about seed oils is that polyunsaturated fats have the potential to be unstable. So saturated fat, it's very stable. That's why you can make, you know, you can make ghee, you can make uh, tallow, and it's a, it's, it's a fat that is very stable at room temperature. It's actually stable at heat as well. That's why people are starting to cook with this again. But polyunsaturated fats are the most unstable, and the more bonds they have, the potentially more unstable they can be. So let me just give you some examples. So a common oil that has gotten a bad rap lately, and I think for good reason, is linoleic acid. Linoleic acid is one of the quote unquote seed oil fatty acids. It is a polyunsaturated fat. It is a vegetable oil, but it only has two double bonds. This one is known to be unstable. It's known to be rancid on a regular basis. And when it inserts itself into different cell membranes, it can cause problems. So we know that some polyunsaturated fats seem to be bad. Linoleic acid also is the precursor to arachidonic acid, and this is an omega-6 polyunsaturated fat, unlike the DHA and EPA, which are omega-3 polyunsaturated fats. Now, what's interesting is that the omega-3s have a lot of double bonds. So EPA has five, DHA has six, so these are potentially unstable. And this is one of the reasons why you have to be careful as to which product you're gonna use if you're gonna actually use one of these fish oil products. Now the omega-3 fatty acids are different than the linoleic acid because the omega-3s are not the precursor to arachidonic acid. They do not go down the inflammatory pathway. In fact, they actually are anti-inflammatory. This is one of the main benefits that you get. So before we get to the clinical benefits, let's talk about this omega-6 to three ratio. So there's a couple of different ways you can test this actually. So you can get this thing called the omega index. And the omega index will tell you what the percentage of omega-3 fats is in your red blood cells. This is also how we measure magnesium actually. If you look at this number, you can see that there's a threshold of around eight to 10% of composition in your red blood cells that will be associated with improved overall health. So kind of an interesting thing to measure. You can also look at the omega-6 to 3 ratio in the blood. Now, what's interesting is that in the diet, 
we used to have somewhere around a ratio of one to one or four to one of omega-6 to three. Now they're saying in the literature that if you look at the diet, if it's at least 10 to one, then you're going to see benefit. But honestly, most diets, if you're consuming highly processed foods, probably more like 30 to one, omega-6 to omega-3. So this is bad because you're overloading the inflammatory pathway. It's one of the many, many reasons why we have chronic inflammation because of our diet. So then the question is, is does supplementing omega-3s make all of that better? And there's some mixed evidence here, but I'm gonna bring it back to bones. So first of all, we know that inflammation is bad for bones. We know that chronic inflammation will result in increased osteoclast activity. So again, the question is, is does adding fish oil fix that? And I think the answer is maybe. Let's take a look at the literature. And this first study that I'm gonna point out is just simply showing that yes, if you provide omega-3 fatty acids in the form of fish oil, then you will see a reduction in TNF-alpha, CRP, and other markers of inflammation. So we know in this first study that we are going to see a systemic improvement in inflammation as a result of supplementation of omega-3 fatty acids. So that's cool. Now, I also found a preponderance of data on bone health, but it was only in mice and rats. So apparently in mice and rats, if you give them omega-3s, their bones look better. Great but I really wanna know what that does for humans. And we do have one of those uh, to show you. Before we get there, let's talk about some of the obvious benefits of fish oil. And this is why people like them. So if you look at this second study here, this is a study that looked at the effect of DHA and EPA on risk factors for cardiovascular disease. And you can see that there's a reduction in triglyceride, increase in HDL number, particle size, decrease in platelet aggregation, blood pressure, heart rate, improved arterial compliance, endothelial function, like there's a lot of good things. And if you look at this trial called the Reduce It trial, so this was actually a, a trial that was done for at the FDA approval of the drug Vasipa. And Vasipa is four grams of high quality EPA. So EPA alone, no DHA, but EPA alone. And there was a reduction in this trial of cardiovascular events. So this is good, right? So it's probably good for your heart. But the big question for me is why? So whenever we're looking at something in blood like omega-6 to 3 ratio or the omega index, my question is, is this, are we looking at the association of this thing or are we looking at the absence of the thing that we're trying to get back? What I mean by that is if you look at people who eat more fish and they have more omega-3s naturally in their diet, is that going to have the impact or the same impact rather of somebody who's taking a supplement? So it's always good to look at intervention trials. And there is actually one intervention trial on bone health that I want to show you. The mechanisms behind this, I think, are mostly driven by the inflammation pathway, but there might be some other mechanisms. That's a lot of cardiovascular benefit from just inflammation reduction, but inflammation is important. So it's hard to know. So before I get to this trial on the um, bone health benefits, if you're struggling to find your own way through this bone health quagmire and you haven't been to our masterclass yet, please come to our masterclass. It's totally free. You can sign up for the masterclass in the uh, description on YouTube. Again, totally free. I go through the common myths and misconceptions that we see in people who are pursuing bone health. And we leave about 20 minutes for Q&A. I run these myself about every two weeks. So if you haven't done it, please do it. Okay, let's talk about the human evidence with omega-3s as an intervention with bone mineral density as an outcome. Now this study actually exists, which is cool, although there's only one that I could find. So this is a four study for today, and this is a human randomized control trial from Australia. 202 individuals who took 4.5 grams of fish oil for two years. They were compared to a low dose group that took 0.45 grams, which is not a lot of fish oil. But the problem is, is there was no difference in bone mineral density in two years. Now, I didn't have all the actual data. This was their, um, this was in the abstract, I didn't have access to the paper. Um, so I don't know if this was, there was no statistically significant change. Did they all lose? I don't know. But there was no statistically significant increase. Otherwise they would have reported it. So um, that's a little disappointing, but honestly, I wouldn't expect it to. Because again, what's the mechanism? It's inflammation reduction. Well, were these people inflamed in the first place? Maybe, maybe not. I did find one other study that looked at fish oil as an intervention for women who are on aromatase inhibitors, 
during breast cancer treatment and it didn't make any difference either. But again, in that situation, I also wouldn't expect it to make any difference. It's definitely not powerful enough to counteract the effects of a aromatase inhibitor uh, on estrogen and estrogen receptors. So there's definitely room for improvement here from a bone health perspective, but does that mean that we shouldn't take it? Not necessarily. We know that it's anti-inflammatory. We know that it improves lipids. We know that it decreases platelet aggregation, which should reduce your risk of stroke and blood clot. And I can measure a deficiency in omega-3s in your red blood cells. So we do use it. It does make sense to me. The challenge is if you're buying this off of Amazon or from Costco, you are probably consuming rancid oil. And what I mean by rancid is it's gone bad, it is rotten, it was, it'll be absolutely inflammatory and you should not consume it. There was also a study that looked at fish oils on the market and some of the fish oils didn't even have DHA and EPA in it. So you have to get this from a company that's reliable. You have to um, understand that the supplement industry is just not regulated at all, actually. So they need to have third-party testing. You need to trust the people that you're buying these from. Again, I would not buy supplements from Amazon or Costco. So if you want to know the products that we use, so generally we buy, if we're going to have a capsule, we buy it from uh, Fullscript, which has a lot of different products in there. And most of our patients will get their, their stuff from Fullscript because we know that Fullscript will maintain it in a warehouse that is going to rotate through stock. They're going to keep it at the right temperature. They're going to ship it. If it needs to be shipped cold, they'll ship cold, et cetera. They're going to protect their product. So there's a lot of different companies that have reputable products. And if they're on full script, they're probably fine. Uh, so Metagenics is a company. They have a product called Omegagenics. Um, you know, Carlson's has the potential to be good. So there's just a lot of good potential products out there. But some people struggle with the capsules or they might want to combine this with something else. So AlgaCal actually came out with a unique product and you know that we use AlgaCal Plus and we use AlgaCal D3 Complete and their complete collagen is great. So we are already ordering from AlgaCal for a number of different things. So they have their triple power liquid. Now this is a uh, EPA and DHA. So 750 milligrams of EPA, 450 milligrams of DHA in one tablespoon, but it's combined with astaxanthin and curcumin extract. So you get an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory effect in addition to the fish oil. And it actually tastes pretty good. So um, they actually have a burp-free guarantee. And this is something that we do have in the house. And so if I'm going to take it, this is how I'm going to take it. And um, I'm never good at taking things that stay in the fridge. And this one is in the fridge. So I can't say that I take it every day, but I do use it. So in the end, we replace omega-3 because we can measure deficiency. I know it will independently improve inflammation and inflammatory markers, but will it independently improve bone? I don't know. Maybe not. But there is a health span impact. There is a health span benefit. Inflammation reduction is something we should all be doing anyway. So I don't see much from a risk perspective uh, for taking this. So I think it's mostly an upside. And the AlgaCal, if you're interested in going down that pathway, uh, we have a code for AlgaCal, which will give you, if you've never ordered from them before, we'll give you a discount off of your first order. Um, and you can figure out what their ecosystem looks like and whether or not those products are right for you. So that's it for today. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis is a not the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.